incredibly affordable Seiko 5s you need to buy before they're gone. Let's get into it. <laughs> Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. It's another show about Seiko. Yes, today I'm not just showing you one, I'm showing you two. Ever since I reviewed the 55th anniversary Seiko 5, I've been obsessed with finding Seiko 5s that aren't being made by Seiko anymore, but you can still buy brand new. If you are starting your watch journey and you want your first watch to be a Seiko and you're looking at their 5 range these days, it's either an SKX copy or a pilot sea watch. Now we don't have to go too far back to see just how many Seiko 5s Seiko made. You just have to look at one of the last Seikos I reviewed, the Landshark. A watch that definitely had its own personality that very sadly is no longer being made. Now today, thanks to Joma Shop, I'm going to show you another two watches that are fantastic value for money and gives you a good idea of just how good Seiko 5s used to be, you know? Haha. <laughs> These watches on Joma Shop's website are around the $100 mark, just over. And to get Seiko watches with dials like these now, you're probably looking at spending at least double. So if you're after an incredibly affordable alternative to a Rolex Datejust that also has the day, these two watches are well worth a look at. Joma Shop sent these bad boys in to me for review and I don't have to give them back. <laughs> are you Seiko 5 ready? Let's go! So ladies and gentlemen, look at these stunners. The SNX S73 and the SNX S79K1. A proper Seiko Japanese 1980s to 90s look. First of all, obviously you are taken by the dials of these watches. The cases are quite mid-sized, very sleek design, full of curves to them, definitely have the Seiko DNA in them. As these are Seiko 5s, we have a recessed crown at four o'clock. One thing you do notice straight away is that the case is all polished and it doesn't go particularly well with the all brushed bracelet. More on that later. But first impressions, these are two very stunning looking Seikos for not a lot of dollar. Quick spec check! Both these watches are the same, it's only the dials that are different. We've got a 37 millimeter diameter case, 43 lug to lug, it's 12 millimeters thick, and unfortunately it has a 19 millimeter lug width. So a good mid-size, it's gonna fit a lot of wrists, it's gonna slip under a lot of cuffs. I can't really call the watch a strapaholic just because of that odd lug width. Protecting the dial is Seiko's in-house Hardlex crystal. They've been making Hardlex crystal since the 70s. It's far better than mineral glass and yes, it's not as scratch resistant as sapphire, but I have never had a problem with any of my 30 to 40 Seikos with hard lex crystals. Don't be snobby on the hard lex. We do not have a screw down crown, but it is recessed. And we have a screw down exhibition case back showing off that automatic movement. Unfortunately, these watches are only 30 meters water resistant. So rain proof, splash proof, doing the dishes, just proof. And it's probably not a watch you'd be showing off when there's a monsoon season. That is a great benefit of buying a modern day Seiko 5. They've upped the atmospheric pressure <laughs> the bracelet is definitely a bone of contention. They are very light and very jingly jingly jangly. The brushing doesn't go with the polishing of the watch. I do actually like the three link look. We got hollow end links, hollow links, they're rolled links and they're an absolute bugger to change. I broke two tools trying to change these bracelets. Sometimes they're nice and easy, sometimes they're not. Anyway, very simple clasp. It's pressed and it's pretty bendy, you know, not greatly made. However, because of the small links and the fact you get four micro adjusts, these these things are going to fit lovely jubbly. Okay, let's look at the face. Dial time. And this is what drew me to these watches. Beautiful sunburst dials that really do an amazing job lifting everything off this dial. I love the three-dimensional indices. They work so well with those baton hands. I love the applied logo, which you'd be lucky to get even with you spending 500 pounds on a Seiko these days. I'm not usually a day-date complication fan, but these are framed so well. And I gotta admit, I love the blue of the Saturday. It's red on a Sunday, by the way. But everything on this dial works so good darn well. Simple, yet elegant and refined for not a lot of dollar. 
So we've got loom on the hands, loom on the indices, out of 10, how does this puppy glow? Really bright, obviously using the in-house LumaBright technology. And this for me is what elevates it from a dress watch. This is more of a sporty watch, ready to go in the daytime and in the nighttime. <laughs> So powering these watches is a discontinued Seiko movement. The 7S26, still a hugely reliable engine that will never let you down. Powering away at 21,600 beats per hour, 38 hours of power reserve. And as long as you've got a little bit of nail on your fingers, you can operate this quite easily. Pull out to the first position, wind the crown away from you and you change the date, wind it towards you and you change the day. Pulling out to the last position, we do not have hack that means the seconds hand doesn't stop, but we can change the time. Very nice. Hello. On my six and a half inch wrist, and these are lovely. I know the bracelets are pretty shoddy, but they are actually really comfortable on my wrist. And if you wear them tight enough, you don't feel the jingly jingly jangliness. Yes, they do have some girth underneath and do look a bit raised off the wrist, mainly because of the size of the watch. It's not very big, but for me, I think it just adds to the charm. I love these watches watches outside. They really, really pop. And I still don't know which one's my favourite yet. So there we go, two beautiful discontinued Seiko 5s you need to get before they're gone. The beauty with Joma Shop is that they take in a lot of discontinued stock that the main brands like Seiko don't sell anymore and don't make. These watches are still at a good price, but obviously you do have to be aware of import tax. I think the absolute stars of the show are the dials. I'm leaning towards the darker gray one, just because those indices pop a bit more, you know? But on the silver version, I love how the Seiko 5 logo pops from the dial. Obviously, this is entry-level Seiko, and I guess now, vintage affordable entry-level Seiko, and they are gonna have their shortcomings, obviously with these ones, the bracelet, but provided you've got a good NATO or a leather strap that is 19 millimeters in width, and to be fair, you could probably get away with 18. I think these watches can be with you for a long time. No matter if you're starting at your watch journey or coming to the end. Take it from me, I've been collecting Seikos for a while and even I am excited about these two watches. The only thing left for me to say is get them while you still can. Here it is, my wife's first impressions of these two beautiful Seiko 5s. <laughs> this is boring, but in a really horrible way. Reminds me of a watch that all grandads used to wear and still do. Don't like it. Apologies to all granddads out there. I like it. If you want a bit more of the Mad Watch Collector and want to show support, get on there, click join. Also get some merch. There's some fantastic merch now. Look down there, down there. Oh. And if I've got you for a few more minutes, take a look at this show. Most definitely a Seiko. <laughs> Go on, click it, it's phenomenal. Click, click, click it.